Hey everybody, Scott Steen with Winners and Winers coming to you direct from the bowels of the Winners and Winers Sports and Entertainment Complex to talk about my deep three for Friday, December the 14th. Before we do that, we'll take care of a couple things. First of all, don't forget to like and subscribe. Give me some comments as always. Let me know which games you guys are playing, what you're on. And uh, if you do well, I'll give you a shout out. We got lots of shout outs coming at the end and we're going to have some fun with those, trust me. Uh, the other thing, my other big announcement for today is uh, in one of our uh, f uh, five-star minutes, we have a hockey game. A lot of you guys have been asking about hockey. You've been putting some hockey uh, hockey predictions up there. So I'm going to, uh, we've, we've got a hockey uh, video ready to go for you as a part of our series here for today. So if you go over there and watch it, don't forget, even though I, play, I get you all the time, uh, give me some comments, give me some thumbs up about the hockey video. If you guys like it, if you dig it, if we get good response, uh, we'll make more. So there you go. And like I said, it's uh, it's not me. I'm not a hockey guy. It's uh, some of our great hockey writers over at Winners and Winners and Stat Salt. So uh, don't, you know, don't ask me questions in the, in the comment section like you usually do about hockey, about, you know, what about if Gil Sheru was out? Like, I, I have no idea. So um, I, it's, it's it's a weakness. I admit it's the uh, it's my kryptonite. I like watching hockey. I just don't cap it um, yet. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to get up to speed on that. So, with that being said, don't forget to hang around. Shout-outs at the end. And, uh, yeah, more, more details on our contest to come. And with that, away we go. First game I'm looking at here is in the NBA. Atlanta Hawks uh, visiting the Garden, take on the Boston Celtics. Celtics minus 13. You know, at first glance, without, uh, without Al Horford, uh, this seems like a lot of points. But... Boston is hot, red hot. Uh, they've won and they've covered seven straight. Uh, they played without Horford their last two, and uh, it really hasn't affected either their winning or their rebounded, uh, the rebounding. They rebounded for 57 and 60 in their last two contests, so they haven't missed Horford that much. Atlanta, on the other hand, uh, with Lynn and Deadman uh, playing the post, uh, they're not the kind of team that's really going to be able to take advantage of the absence of Al Horford. Uh, you know, the, I think the market is doing its thing. As teams get hotter and win more and more and, and begin to cover, they react. I don't think they've uh, completely corrected yet to Boston Street. I still think there's value in the minus 13. Give me the Celtics. And, uh, yeah, I'll lay the 13 at home. I ain't scared. All right. Second game, still in the NBA. Heading out west. Taking on the, uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder taking on uh, the Denver Nuggets there in Denver. Denver is plus two in this game. And why might that be, you ask? Well, uh, very simple. Denver has been hit hard by the injury bug. They've lost Millsap and Harris just this week. They're out for an extended period of time. You know, Jokic has been all everything this year so far, but can he continue to do enough? Um, you know, in Oklahoma City, it's still one of those teams I think you're still paying a little bit of a premium when you when you want to back them. And I think that's the case here. I think there's been a little bit of an oversteer. I think there's an overcorrection to the Denver injuries. Um, they're at home. They took care of business last time. I think even without Harrison Millsap, I think they can get it done here. Give me the Nuggets and the two points, and uh, we'll see what we'll see what happens. All right, my last play is a, a play from the college football, a college basketball hardwood, as the Illinois Chicago Flames take on the DePaul Blue Demons. Uh, the bet I'm looking at here is DePaul uh, minus if probably five-ish or so in the first half. I, we, don't have the, we don't have the props up yet on that one as we make this video. However, the line is nine and a half. So extrapolating that out, thinking the line uh, first half line is going to be somewhere in the five, maybe five and a half range. So um, this is going to be an interesting contest. The, uh, the Flames you know they're not a ter they're not a terrible team, but they are a notoriously slow starting team, especially on the road. Um, on the on the road this year, they've averaged 76 points per game, not too shabby at all. However, they put up just 33 in the first half. On the other side of the coin, uh, Blue Demons have allowed just 27.8 points in the first half from their opponents this year at home. That is just fine, um, and they have in the meantime scored 38.3 on their own so you're looking at a 10 and a half or you're looking at a uh, 10 and a half point difference there in the first half uh, i think that's pretty close to the numbers we're going to see in this one i like DePaul first half minus the points all right guys there you go three good picks from the basketball realm today 
I think if you guys get down on those games with me, we'll all, uh, at the end of the night, I think we'll all be heading back to the window. All right, so now that we've done all that, here's the fun part. I got a whole page of shout outs. Here we go. So my first shout out of the day uh, goes to one of our, one of our newer viewers, uh, David, who's a lifetime San Diego fan, was very complimentary of the videos. I uh, appreciate it, brother. I really uh, I really enjoy your, your kind words. And he had the stat of the day. Uh, he pointed out that play, teams playing on Thursday night coming off an overtime game the previous week are a dreadful 3-18 and 18 against the spread. I mean, uh, excuse me, straight up, straight up. Uh, that is not surprising. It's a, it's a great stat. And like I said, it's not surprising, especially when you have a, a game where like Kansas City played uh, last Sunday against Baltimore, a tough, physical, bruising team, and they had to go to overtime to get that victory there, thanks to uh, Harrison Butker missing a, a short field goal as time expired in regulation. Anyway, um, it's a great stat. It, it ended up uh, being very prescient as uh, the Chiefs dropped that uh, heartbreaker there tonight to take that number to 3-19. and 19. So, David, thanks for the kind words. Great stat. Hope you were on the right side of that game. Uh, Roland, I uh, haven't heard from Roland uh, previously, but he hit the Spurs. Uh, he hit the Spurs money line tonight. Good call there. Unfortunately, Roland, like my friend Scotty, he rode the Chiefs. He rode the Chiefs money line as well. Looked like a great bet uh, for uh, 59 minutes and 56 seconds. However, it was uh, it was not to be as the Chiefs defensive backs decided that they only needed to uh, account for 10 guys instead of 11 on the two-point conversion. And uh, kudos to the Chargers for uh, for going for two there and getting it done. Uh, that's, a, that's a ballsy move, and I like it, especially on the road. I think it's a good call. I think it's the right call. And, uh, yeah, great play. You executed correctly. Confusion in the Chiefs' backfield, and uh, boom, Bolts are the winner. All right, continuing with the shout-outs. Uh, we got Daniel. Oh, my old, buddy, my old buddy Daniel over in Wales, man. Uh, I'm not sure if Daniel's getting up early or if he's staying up late to watch these games, but the only thing I know for sure is that dude ain't getting nearly enough sleep. Uh, Daniel had a split decision tonight. He rode the Chiefs with us, but he also had over 55. That came in. Um, I also I also uh, played the over 54 and a half right at game time. I think somebody uh, somebody asked me about that in the comments section, and I uh, I told him that I got down on the over as well. Uh, I also took I also took San Diego uh, plus a half uh, a second half bet just to uh, just to head my just to head hedge my Chiefs there a little bit. I've seen these Chiefs play too many times in the second half. You know, I'll tell you what that is a, that's the weirdest thing to watch Andy Reid coach. The first half it's Don Coriel. The second half uh, he he becomes Marv Levy. It's just it's, it's frustrating. Uh, the only surprising part is we didn't have to wait to the playoffs for the Chiefs to have a terrible show. Uh, uh, end game like this one where they uh, give away a 14 point lead in the last five minutes. Anyway, not that I'm bitter or going to uh, dwell on it or anything. Moving on! <laughs> uh, one of the smarter plays of the night. Oh, JP was on the Chiefs with us. Uh, sorry, brother. That's, uh, I, thought we were, I thought we were home. Uh, G&G. &G, uh, good to hear from G&G. &G. He took uh, one of the smarter bets of the night. He took the Chiefs teaser. Uh, far late, uh, he's playing that with Golden State. Uh, which is a game tonight. So uh, good luck on your second leg there, brother. Uh, he also hit the Kings Blue Jackets under in the uh, world of the NHL. And a special shout out to Lilium. Uh, Lilium, I, and I always try to, uh, I always try to get to everybody's comments as quick as I can. But they were coming pretty fast and furious there this afternoon, and I missed one. Uh, Lilium asked me a question about playing the over under, and I did not get a chance to answer them back. So. My apologies. Hope, hopefully, they were able to read in the other comment section where I said that I already got down on the over. So I will, uh, I will be ever vigilant, Lilium. If you have a, if you have a question in the future, I will do my best to answer it in a timely fashion. And uh, uh, Paul, Paul rode the Chiefs uh, into into hell with us, into heartbreak there in the East End Zone. But uh, Paul did have a happy ending uh, because he had a nice puck line hit with the Montreal Canadiens tonight at plus 235. So Paul, hopefully you took uh, even bets on those and you actually made a little money and uh, you got to you got to head back to the window there even without me. All right, I think that's it. Oh no, I'm kidding. Um, I got one more. 
<clears throat> excuse me, I've got one more. This goes. This is this is a special shout out, and I this is a promised one. Uh, the shout out to uh, Dracula two hundred nine. You know what? He talked trash on my Chiefs all day long. We kind of went back and forth, and he was utterly convinced that the Chargers would cover that number. I was feeling pretty smart there in the fourth quarter, but Dracula, you know that you know how Dracula is. They don't know when they're dead, and he kept coming and rising again. As the sun set and the moon rose, Dracula and the Chargers prevailed. So, Drac, nice job, brother. For once, Dracula didn't suck. Great pick on the Chargers. <laughs> and I hope you hope you made some oh you hope you made some serious coin there, brother. That was a, that was a good pick. You rode them all day long. You had no doubts, and uh, you ended up uh, you ended up coming through for that one. So you are the man. Thanks for thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, hang with us, brother. Appreciate appreciate you being out there. All right, guys, that's it. Don't forget our hockey stuff. All right, check out the hockey videos. Get down on uh, and all that fun stuff. And yeah, we got bowl season starting tomorrow. Don't forget to check out our bowl videos. I got all those up. And I'll be back tomorrow with my Fab Five and uh, five more. Man, probably probably five more picks. If I can find five riders picks that will be uh, five star. We'll be back with five rider picks tomorrow as well. Until then, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching, and uh, you take care.